Today in the bunker, we're going to talk about hab blocks suitable for the underhive or any other dystopian or post-apocalyptic sort of dwelling. Uh, I made this particular one uh, intending it for the underhive, but it'll be used for various things. So it's made out of foam core and uh, some chipboard and a few other things. It's pretty simple, um, very straightforward build. Um, also, this video is going to be a little different in format than what I normally do. Uh, I had a lot of technical difficulties, which is why A, it's so late, and B, it's going to be in a little bit different format. So, um, Anyway, moving along with that, the first thing I did was figure out about how big I wanted this to be. And I used a, a figure for reference and tried to make it somewhat roomy enough that it could be playable on the inside. So I made this so that the roof comes off and the second story comes off. And you could do that as many high as you wanted to, really. Um, it wouldn't be too difficult. So I basically sketched it up and then um, did the layout. I used a steel ruler and a, a pencil and just laid that out. Tried to be as accurate as I could. I cut that out with a hobby knife and a utility knife and then laid out where I wanted the doors and windows to be. And again, I used a figure for reference to try and get my measurements. Um, so just whatever looks right. I don't want to give a standard measurement because it may not be correct for whatever figures you're using. So then I laid out the windows and the doors. Um, in this case, this hab block has, I intended to put a small, like, shop in the bottom corner. Um, the rest of these, when I build them, probably will not have that. It'll just have windows. So uh, you, that's completely optional. Of course, you know, just go nuts with it. But the windows, once they were cut out, then I had to scratch build all of the window pieces, the frames and the well, the frames, um, which there were, you know, so many windows on this thing. This is where casting up windows or having windows that are laser cut from MDF or whatever uh, would really be cool because doing this many windows, each individually, it's very time consuming. They look great, I think, but yeah. Um, and I did those before I assembled the building. There's, it's so much easier to do these when they're loose, the walls are loose and not together. So then I took and uh, used PVA and some uh, T-pins or dressmaking pins uh, to put that together. It's, you could use hot glue, it would be about 10 times faster. Something possessed me to use PVA, I have no idea why. But in any case, I guess for the extra strength, um, but yeah, you can use hot glue and it would be fine. If the, once I put the floor on, I did all the walls and then I, once that was dry, I glued the floor to it. If your floor is like mine and it's a little bit wonky, that's fine. We're going to put this edging on here that will cover up a multitude of sins. So once you get that edging put on, then test fit that to make sure. And usually like, like anything that's handmade, there's probably going to be one way that it fits together and every other way that it doesn't. So mark it somehow so you know, you know, this is the front and all of the pieces are the front. Um, and it makes it going together a lot easier. Once you get along in the project, you can add details or whatever that you know that is the front. So um, there won't be any question when you go to put the building together, especially when you're gaming with it. So it'll go together much easier. So once that was put together, then I added some corner detail. I just used some uh, half millimeter um, styrene sheet and used my rivet tool and I'll, I'll link to that video um, to add the rivets. I added some corner pieces all the way around um, anywhere that I thought it, it needed to be reinforced. And plus you get that kind of rivety look. And again, that's completely optional. Um, you can apply the rivets. You don't have to put rivets on it. That's a detail I just added because, of, you know, it's the underhive, so it needs rivets. 
Um, you could put a lot more rivets on than I did and that would be fine. There's no right or wrong way to do that. Once that was added, then I put the uh, sides up on the roof and added those corner details. When that was dry, then I took some Vallejo ground texture and stippled that on to add the, the concrete finish. That's again optional. You could use, you could mix some paint with some sand and stipple that on. You could just stipple on um, just Mod Podge. A good thick coating of Mod Podge stippled would give you a very similar texture. Uh, there's any number of ways to do that. Uh, tile grout makes a really, really good, you know, hashtag really, really good cement texture because that's basically what it is. Once that texture dried, and the nice thing about the Vallejo ground texture paste is that it dries pretty quickly, uh, then I hit it with a, a gray primer. Um, the roof looked kind of boring, so I added some drywall tape to give that some texture. And I think that helped. That gave it a very non-skid appearance. Once that was done, then I added, I knew it needed a light over the front door. I scratch built this. This will be, uh, I'm going to do a video on how I did that, but it's using a drinking straw, um, some chipboard, and a piece of drywall tape. So it, it, it turned out pretty good, I thought. You know, it's better than I thought it was going to. And I added some 3D printed bits. Uh, these particular fan pieces are from a set that I bought from Corvus. I don't remember exactly which set. I got a couple of them, but uh, they're really nice. It's some stuff that I 3D printed back when I first got my 3D printer. I need to I need to make some more. Oh, and the doors, I should say, I should add the doors are just uh, I used the the off cuts of foam to press into the door frames because once you add the uh, the wood detail in there, it, it makes it firm enough that it'll just stay in there. You can just press fit it. I just added, in the course of the, the roll-up door, I added some uh, corrugated paper and then painted that to look like rusty metal. In the case of the entrance door, I added some, some more of that half millimeter styrene sheet with uh, rivet detail added, and then I made a door handle out of some wire. I think it was a paper clip, actually, that I used there. And those can pop in and pop out as you need them to, um, especially the, the, the roll-up door. Once I build the rest of the shop, then I can take that off when the shop is open. I'm going to add a sign for the shop as well. That'll come later. For the metal parts, I primed that with uh, the gray, primed everything else, added some burnt umber as a base coat, then dry brushed it with silver, and then stippled it with raw sienna. It's kind of subtle. It doesn't photograph extremely well um, in normal lighting. When, when you're next to it, you can really see the, the rusty splotches. It looks pretty good. So, But there's any number of ways you can do that. Whatever, whatever favorite sort of iron color you like and then rusting technique over that is fine. There's, there's no right or wrong way to do it. The light I just uh, that straw was already yellow. You could just leave it that way, but I wanted to paint that that drywall tape. So I went ahead and primed that. Uh, I coated the whole thing with Mod Podge, and then painted it black. And then went back and picked out the detail of the metal grating, and then went in and repainted that yellow with some some white mixed in to give it kind of a, a light effect. And you could do OSL on there, especially if you had an airbrush. It would probably look really good. The conduit, I wanted a, a little bit extra detail on this fan piece, so I added a conduit out of some half round styrene, but you could use uh, a piece of wood dowel or any number of things. Piece, just actually put wire on there, whatever. Uh, it painted that. Then once uh, that was done, I went back and thinned out some black paint with, actually I used a black wash that I had pre-mixed and started adding the moisture streaks. And I went a little nuts with that, but I don't think it looks too bad. 
Um, once that was done, then I added the some markings to it. Um, in this case, a red stripe along there, which I guess in this dome will indicate that this is a HAB unit of some type. Who knows, maybe I'll think of a system of that. Maybe there already is one, I don't know. I added a number for the building, but you almost can't see it. I used rubber stamps and paint, and it didn't come out all that great. So, probably next time I'll make some sort of little stencil or something. And once that was done, I thought, well, it looks a little too clean still. So, I thinned out some, some more of the uh, raw sienna with some water and started to stipple that on as rust stains. Anywhere that the concrete touched the metal, uh, it, I sort of, you know, put that on there and then made some of the moisture streaks. I stippled that on top of those to make it like a rusty streak. And uh, I think that gave it a really grungy look. The concrete itself, I guess I should backtrack, I left that out. Uh, the concrete itself, primed just primer gray and then I hit it with a black wash and then dry brushed it a lighter gray and then a white to try and kind of pick out that detail uh, of the texture and then that that worked pretty well. It's a, a straightforward build uh, especially once you get your basic design down you can knock these out pretty quick and make a fairly convincing uh, cityscape or you know hivescape sort of thing, hat blocks, you could make them taller, you could make them single story, um, you know, certainly the measurements. These are 18 centimeter squares, and they're just about 18 centimeters almost in every direction, so uh, I think the height's pretty close to that. So they're kind of a cube, which is sort of how I envision uh, a lot of the mass-produced housing in the underhive. Uh, it does not have any gothic details, but I figured that a lot of it would be... I went for a, kind of a more Soviet look. Um, they're almost like the Khrushchev apartments. But um, you could certainly add gothic windows to it and tart that up that way. And, and that would look even more under Hy-Vee. This This is generic enough you could use it. You could plunk it down on a table for this is not a test or even fallout and it would be, probably be fine. So... Anyway, I hope this was useful. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you like this kind of content, be sure to like and subscribe. If you're not already subscribed, and hit the bell, all that stuff they tell us to tell you. And I hope you guys have a fantastic holiday season.